to the Olympic, shaken and disturbed, everybody. Ooh. I'm Darren Karp here with John Thrasher. We are not talking about the Olympics. That is always saved for NMR, of course, where we get to talk <laughs> about anything that's not murder related. But I more so mean that it's a different episode than usual. Okay. Yeah. And John had this brilliant idea of sort of doing an, uh, an Olympic. And by Olympic, we mean we're giving out golds and medals today. We're giving yeah. out a gold silver and bronze with two runners up because here we basically want you to make the board you know how when you're watching the olympics yeah. you see the top three but then you see the two that just could have made it into the yeah. race uh that's maybe what they we're doing. fell off their dismount maybe they you know just if you're a tennis one player, toe you over folded. the line exactly yeah. and yeah. three tenths of a point essentially exactly. uh but each of us is going to share the top five episodes of shaken and disturbed thus far that yeah. we just happen to like this is not ranked in any sort of um scientific way or ratings way yeah. just sort of what john and i really liked and so yeah. we're going to give you 10 episodes with six medals today it's going to be very exciting it's really exciting if you are if you're an episode of true uh of shaken and disturbed it's a big day for you okay it's it's a big day and i and, and i think it's important to talk about how we're ranking yes these episodes john sure so let's say okay so Yes, here come five episodes from us each, including our gold, silver, and bronze episodes. And by the way, we haven't told each other what they are. So there's a chance that some of our episodes may end up on the same list here. But nonetheless, and Go it's ahead, important Darren. to mention, sorry to interrupt you. It's important to mention that we're not going to give you the whole case, but we are going to give yeah. you where to find just that episode little, because yeah. just a little blurb because we don't want to sort of repeat information, just why they've made it into our rankings. Yeah. But yes, go ahead, John, give them the- Yes, uh, the the basing of our rankings are on some of these things, which are number one, shock value. Was yes. it an episode that we remember that you guys remember that really shook you? And maybe, by the way, you have your own top five and we'll love to hear those as well, but we'll get to that in a second. Um, another thing would be, um, did it stay with us? Did we lose sleep over over the episode? Darren and I, you know, we used to do a lot of live shows. And Darren, I feel like every single live show we were asked this question, what is that episode that stayed with you or, or lost sleep over? And it's changed for me over the years. Um, Absolutely. I'll get, and I'll get to some of that as well. Um, another one I think is like, if there's an ending that makes sense, you know, did the did was there justice served or was there no justice served i think both of those endings could uh end up making their way somehow into our top five and then of course uh the last but not least is did you guys listening react to the episode you know do mm. we see a lot of your comments on facebook did we see patreon dms you know every every once in a while we have we hit on one of those things and um so yeah then we're just going to talk about a little bit about why we personally put it on our list yeah so, and I, and let me just yeah. say before we start that yeah. it, there's a lot of episodes to choose from so there are I know. i'm not even confident these are my top five like <laughs> it, it really could change i'm just <clears throat> saying this is a lot based on my mood today of how i was feeling about everything today so this could actually change at any given point in time so no <laughs> judgment on what we choose because well, we have over like a hundred and i was just gonna say episodes to choose from. yes 168 and then we're not doing any, even though there is some overlap, we're not doing any martinis and murder episodes because that would be yeah. literally impossible, I think, to pick from that many. We don't, we don't know, know her anymore. Yeah. So yeah. we're going to do our top shaken and disturbed, and we're going to give you the reference numbers to go back to and re go. listen or visit or visit for the first time if you have. And I'll yet. say, I, I do have a little bit of a recap of the episode so that you guys can just remember what it was that we're talking about. But Darren, you can talk about, about them however you want. So, Darren, let's get right into it. Is there anything else you wanted to add here before we set up our the the final rankings? I don't think so. I think we should uh, we should get going. Get right into John, it. I want you to go first. Should I go first? Okay. Um, the number five, and I'll add a little like drum roll in here, but maybe we save the drum roll for you know the the medalists. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah. I mean? yeah. Number we five. Can't, not yeah. everyone gets a medal in our world, John. Yeah, that's right. We, there's no participation reward here exactly um, I hate to say and, it and i will say to add to darren's point there are 168 episodes i went through most of them like i was skimming through and like i of course i don't know if many people even know this but like i'm the one that's coming up with like the 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 titles and the descriptions exactly. just in the edit process and everything so like there you know if i see something i'm like oh yeah i remember that one you know it kind of stood out and that's what happened with my number five episode of shaken and disturbed which is, and Darren, by the way, if if either of us have one that's on the I'll other's list, it. yeah, make sure we say it. Okay. 
Number five is actually episode number 55 titled Bloody Bump in the Waterbed. Do you remember this one? If not, let me give you some background. Please. That title though is great. <laughs> it's pretty, it was a pretty rough one. So just a little bit of background. 1998, Sheila and Steve Clifton lived in Jacksonville with their daughters, Jesse and Maddie. And on November 3rd, Maddie went out to uh, play after school, but did not return prompting a big search. There was this search involving her neighbors and police and even the National Guard. But despite all of that, she was missing for like a week. Finally, on November 10th, there's a leak in the waterbed. And it's uh, on November 10th, Missy Phillips discovered Maddie's body hidden <laughs> in her son Joshua's waterbed. And they discover her and they realize that she's been stabbed and beaten. And actually, if you remember, Josh admitted to the crime when he was questioned about this. Now, Darren, is this piquing your interest? Do you remember this episode? I do remember. I do remember it vaguely. You know, it's funny because I was telling John, because a lot of these things do have similar stories and backgrounds. So it's hard to remember yeah. every single detail. Right, this right, one right. does come to mind. Can you remind me the episode number and the date we the, released it? It was number 55, Bloody Bump in the Waterbed. I can't remember the date. I should have looked them up and I forgot. But number 55, that would have been probably... Right, early 2022, I believe, based on, you know, when we started the show and everything. Wow. Um, yeah, and so Joshua eventually, uh, you know, confessed to this. He said he accidentally hit Maddie with a baseball bat and panicked and, like, killed yeah. to basically keep her quiet. Uh, he was sentenced to, and, you know, charged as an adult, uh, found guilty of first-degree murder, sentenced to life in prison. However, in 2017, the Supreme Court ruled that automatic life sentences for juveniles were unconstitutional. He actually received a new life sentence with a mandatory review after 25 years. Wow. Yeah. So, um, and if you remember, this was another one where the families, Clifton and the Phillips families, maintained, uh, you know, a supportive Contact. relationship. Yeah. They were right. actually, like, realizing that both families suffered and it was a mis somewhat of a mistake this wasn't like a cold-blooded murder but it just kind of was i just remember the 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 description of a body in a waterbed yeah was so unsettling i remember my grandparents had a waterbed when i was really young and i never really liked the way it felt imagine uh, what it would feel like with a body in it you know yeah the imagery is bad although you know when parents usually it's families let's just say families of sort of the, the perpetrator and the victim can come together and sort of yeah. recognize that it's a tragedy all around yeah. and also not blame each other necessarily because they right. are usually unless they were involved but separate entities um right. from their kin or whatever uh right. i think is actually a nice thing that did not make my list though john i was just so. gonna ask if that made your list but okay we're we're i like that we're not making the same list by the way so yes i like so that we're surprising each yeah. other um, okay, so my top five, my my first one, number five, is actually one yeah. that we did somewhat very, very recently. I'm not oh. even sure I need to go through the <gasps> okay. case details. It's the episode number 166, the Picton Farm Pig oh, Massacre. Oh, my God, yes. This was released on July 7th, 2024. Yeah. Again, episode 166. Uh, this one sort of still haunts me. I just kind of wanted to give you a little bit of background on this, but if if you sort of remember, this is sort of like the, almost a Texas Chainsaw Massacre kind of a uh, scenario here. But basically between 95, 2001, Robert Picton yeah. sort of is believed to at least kill 26 women. Sorry, I have the notes written on my other computer, which yeah, is why yeah. I'm not facing you. 26 okay. women. Many of them were sort of sex workers. He used to have these yeah. huge elaborate parties at his farm. This was sort of a really good ruse in disguise. You know, there were local police officer there. There were local people there. Sort of disguised from this horrible thing that was really happening. Um, and he actually recently died May 31st of this year. He was killed oh, wow. in prison, I, I believe, by his oh, cellmate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and he was convicted in 2007 on six counts of second degree murder and sentenced to life in prison. Obviously, mm. his life has ended. But uh, really interesting sort of. Uh, maybe because it has to do a little bit with the fact of like slaughtering animals mixed yeah. with humans that you it was a little bit of fried green tomatoes if you remember if yeah. you've ever seen that movie you'd you'd understand the reference but yeah. this one this one for the ick factor i think is certainly one of the top ones that we've ever sort of done <laughs> i think it yeah. sustains itself in pop culture there was a book written on it several movies i think have been made on yeah. it um also again robert picton just died in prison and if you look at his picture it's you, you sort of think like you're looking at Hannibal Lecter in a, in a, 
in a weird way. And I don't know if it was because it was so gruesome and, and gr- gruesome and gross. Grossome yeah. is a good word. Grossome, um, yeah. But just to, I just, it, it kind of still haunts me. I remember thinking about it. I got a lot of messages about it. And um, yeah. it certainly was a massacre and disgusting and not too long ago in history. So that's my Yeah, that's a five. great one. That's a good number five. I remember trying to come up with a thumbnail for YouTube and Patreon for that. And his face it's it's just scary. so scary looking. Yeah, I really, that was a good number five. That's a very disturbing yeah. one. Okay, moving on to number four here. We are still not giving medals out yet. Okay. No, these that's are, at the end. These are the good episodes that uh, just have different, you know, different thing. For me, number four was number episode number 88, The Killers in the Bite. Ooh, that's yes. what happened to me. Listen to NMR from this week, patrons, because it's on <laughs> that's Patreon. Right. That I was killed by mites. Yes, yes, you got to it first. I was going to mention that. The Patreon NMR, Darren, has been attacked, is basically. Um, I think you might be the next episode, in fact. I Volume 2, be. coming soon. But uh, just a reminder, a little bit about this. So here's a little background. In 1985, Sherry Rasmus- Rasmussen was an RN who lived with her husband, John Rutten, in Los Angeles. And on February 24th, 1986, I was one years old, one year old, uh, wait a Important. minute, one month old, sorry, one month old. John Important. found Sherry murdered, excuse me, my voice is struggling this today. John found Sherry murdered in their home with their BMW missing. Now, police believe that Sherry was killed during a burglary by intruders who entered through an upstairs window and her body had shown signs of struggle and a gunshot wound and a bite mark. Now, Sherry's father mentioned an ex-girlfriend of John's, an LAPD officer, had confronted Sherry months before that murder. And despite this lead, detectives found uh, focused on two Latino burglars, but the case went cold, actually. So then in the early 2000s, as you probably have heard, DNA profiling became a key tool in solving cases. And a 2005 analysis, remembered, if you remember this, Darren, revealed that the killer was actually female, renewing interest in this case. And then in 2009, the cold case team um, basically identified a woman named Stephanie, John's ex-girlfriend, that LAPD officer, as a suspect. Um they were able to de- uh, obtain her DNA, which actually might matched the bite mark on her arm. Stephanie was arrested 2009 and charged with her murder. And the prosecution argued that uh, she killed Sherry during a confrontation. Um, Stephanie was convicted in 2012 and sentenced to 27 years to life in prison. Wow. She will be eligible in parole in 2039 after serving a minimum of 16 years. But I remember if, I remember that being like a really interesting case because we've talked a, a lot about bite marks over the years, but mm-hmm. I think that was one of the first ones where they were able to match DNA from a bite mark, which I thought was This was a Seinfeld episode as well. I probably brought it up um, I'm sure when did, we yeah. actually had the episode. Yeah. But yeah, because it, it is sort of shown that having a bite mark and then trying to match it up with the teeth isn't necessarily exactly that's what made you know it interesting. it's it's a lot you know basically like a lie detector test which is yeah. like interesting information but not necessarily conclusive and so and active, dna yeah. is fairly conclusive that's a really good one john to remind me the episode number 88 you said number 88 the killers in the bite the year i was born there you go that's right um, okay, Darren, okay. what's your number four then we're going to start handing out medals okay number four so you're, Gosh, you're this is them really up. A, you're gonna, number four. Okay. I'm, I'm going to go with similar to the one that I chose for number five, which is why these two are probably in my um, in, the, in the honorable mentions. Okay, okay. this is episode sure. 101, Angel of Death. We released Ooh. this on January 15th, 2023. So a little bit while ago before John's birthday, before John's sixth birthday. <laughs> uh, just to remind everyone, this was about Charles Cullen. Uh, and the reason this case was so important is because he was in a medical hospital and was able to sort of get away, yes. quote unquote, with killing a lot of people. It just so happens that he also did this in a hospital that, not that I was born in, but in one that is in my hometown. That's right. Yes, yes, yes. Um, And so this literally is sort of the perfect... Um, um, I say perfect pejoratively, but really the slip of the knife. They don't even know how many people he necessarily murdered due to yeah, the lack of records. Yeah. It's hard to tell uh, some someone who would have just died normally or under the auspices of him. Yeah. Uh, but to give you a little background. So he first kind of on June 11th, 1988, I'm reading a little bit of just some of these um, yeah. main things in New Jersey. So 
he basically administered a lethal overdose of intravenous medication. And that's really how he came to kill so many people and not a lot of, it's sort of only after a number of people died in his care did people Mm -hmm. kind of catch on to this. And so he's killed a number of different people. He was arrested at a restaurant in December 12th, 2003, and it was only charged with one count of murder and one count of attempted murder. And, Right. And so that's kind of how they they caught him. But this was in New Jersey. This took place in Trent, New Jersey. This took place at Mountainside Ooh. Hospital. So it was one of those things. And I think I compared it to the time a little bit like the priesthood, how, you know, they don't really get rid of their own. They just move them on to yeah. another facility. And that's kind of how it's easy to kind of s- escape under all of this. But um, yeah, this one was a good one. Angel of Death, episode number 101 about Charles Cullen. I think it has the shock factor. I think people were talking about it. It's, again, a pop culture reference that, you know, they had Dr. Death. A lot of things were yeah, made yeah. in references to these. I think this is one of those things that a lot of people know about. But um, it also yeah. a little bit terrifies me of how probably easy it is for the medical profession, you know, for this yeah. to occur. So, yeah, yeah. Um, it looks like I, I pulled up some information from our episode. It says in total, Charles admitted to murdering 40 different patients. Right. Um, so, yeah, that's yeah, that's a prolific. Uh, he admitted to that, killer. but he was only originally charged with what they could prove. And obviously, yeah. even though he admitted to it, 40 is yeah. sort of this arbitrary number because it still could have been 140 and it could have been less. It's just what he sort yeah, of totally. admitted to. So he sort of had control up until the end. Um, wow. That's a good one. Yeah. I remember that one. Yeah. Okay, it's time to start handing out the medals, you guys. Ooh, Here are our top three, our gold, our silver, our bronze. And starting, let me get, do a little drum roll here. I'll add it into the show, Darren, a little drum roll. Then my bronze medalist is going all the way back to episode 12. And this is a wow. different one. The John Wayne Gacy Devil in Disguise reaction episode. Do you remember this? I do remember this. I will say reaction episodes are in my, are in my top. This reaction oh, episode didn't make it in, but there are reaction episodes that are in my top because I feel like that's when the best okay. conversation. I agree. Okay. I agree with you. And I didn't really think about that until we decided on this format. And then I started seeing some of these episodes. I was like, oh yeah, that was a good one. And I have to say, I mean, the reason I'm giving this one the bronze medal, and this was a, by the way, a uh, documentary that aired on Peacock, I believe, right, Darren? Was yeah. it Peacock? Yeah. Um, and we had talked about I John. So. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah. And we had talked about John Wayne Gacy a lot over the years. I mean, how are you, you know, we're true crime podcasters. We, of course we know who John Wayne Gacy is, but I will say, I remember the reason that this stuck out with me is I remember our conversation being very dark and macabre, but one of the reasons it stuck out so deeply for me and I'm giving it the bronze is because I was so disturbed by this documentary. I was very compelled to watch it. I, you know, and that's not always the case, frankly, with true crime documentaries. I I don't always want to sit through them um, at this stage in my life and career, but that's fair. Yeah. This one, I just remember the imagery of like the digging up of the bodies under the house and like how, how he went about doing it. And it just stayed with me for a long time. And this is one of the ones, as I mentioned at the top of the show, when people ask one of those, you know, what what's the case that that stayed with you? This is one of them. I remember specifically not not sleeping well because I was so disturbed by what they covered on this documentary. He also has a terrifying face. He was a clown. Like <laughs> that too. He was yes. just like absolutely terrifying. Clowns yes. mixed with murderers, like it's terrifying. Yeah. And then, I mean, this is the same guy who eventually was like working with the police after he was caught. And like, you know, there's there's a lot to his story that I just found. And I find that, by the way, in and of itself, a little bit disturbing as well. Um, But yeah, so John Wayne Gacy, Devil in Disguise reaction episode that was number 12. So that was had that had to been like summer or August of 2021. So it's been a minute now. Can you believe how long we've been doing this, by the yeah, way? Yeah, this is crazy. And it's crazy. That's a yeah. great one, John. That's a Thank really, that's you. worthy of a bronze so and a good here story. Here it is. I'm bestowing the bronze medal onto Peacock. Bestowing, we're bestowing, yeah. we're bestowing. And you know, actually, I'm remembering we have a friend that works at Peacock, Amanda. Yeah, Amanda. And we should give her a bronze medal or send her some sort of an just award. Just in general, we'll just give yeah. her a bronze medal. Well, that's true, because she's the best, yeah. 
All okay, right, what's your bronze? bronze? Well, my bronze is actually a reaction as well. <gasps> I'm going to say it is a reaction as well as episode 99, Casey Anthony, Where the Truth oh. Lies. Uh, we released this on December 18th, 2022, uh, mm -hmm. which is kind of crazy only because it seems like that conversation to me, I, I could kind of recall the talking points that we had. The truth is yeah. I don't need to really remind you guys. I didn't even write yeah. down anything, anything down that we kind of talked about, but this was a peacock they, they came out with That's a response right. to it, but this was a, a really successful Peacock documentary. This was the first time Casey Anthony had sp spoke out in 11 years since the trial of 2011. Uh, this was the first case that I remember watching working at Bravo. So that just goes to show how long I've been at Bravo. But I remember watching this trial mm. on my TV at my desk. You know, oh, like the original case that you're talking the about. The original wow. trial. Yeah, um, yeah. So that's, I think, also why this reaction like really stirred a lot in me. And let's be frank. I mean, so this documentary features Casey Anthony, um, you know, her side of the story. She was obviously found not guilty of killing her daughter, Kaylee Anthony, but Basically, no one believed her. Uh, after 2011, she sort of lost her life. She had to go into hiding. I didn't know what really yeah. happened to her. Um, yeah, yeah. Sort of joked around. Like, I remember sort of saying at the time, and I think I said this on the episode, regardless of innocent or guilt, her life is over. It's not like she's going to live. Just because she's vindicated by the court of law, she's really not vindicated by the court of public opinion. And yeah, that almost matters more when you're trying to live your life. And so this person clearly has suffered regardless of what happened. But in this documentary... They really shed a light on the weirdness of the parents, specifically the yep. father, what had sort of gone down. She explains why there was 30 days sort of lapsed judgment, how the media had made her look sort of like this young party girl hussy. And, you know, for frankly, 11 <laughs> years, I was convinced that she was found not guilty, but certainly took a part in it. Yeah. Um, this documentary made me change my mind and made yeah, me I remember really, you, saying that. you know, I, I, I'm not, and I and I remember this distinctively because when people ask me about Casey Anthony, you know, I tend to toe the lie on things, especially on this podcast. I tend to fight for the Ed Kempers and whoever we were talking about last yeah, week, yeah, yeah, plastic yeah. surgery guy. But you know, I'm not saying that she's innocent, right? I'm just saying that she's not guilty. I don't think that Kay that Casey Anthony single handedly killed Kaylee Anthony. I, I think there's a lot of cover up. I don't necessarily think she's saying the whole truth, but I don't think, I think the verdict was correct. I don't think there was any real solid evidence to bring the her evidence hand. At trial, yeah. The evidence at trial, from what we know, the evidence laid about from what was brought yeah. at trial to yeah. convict Casey Anthony of killing Kaylee Anthony. I know I got a lot of pushback. I know people have strong opinions about it. I know yeah, it's particularly hard because she's a mother. Um, and, you know, the press attention she got for just being white and Sort yeah. of this vixeny, you know, a little Amanda Noxy in that way. Um, right. But uh, I That's thought the documentary one. was well done, and I liked our reaction to it. And I think certainly in terms of pop culture, this one, arguably one of the most famous of the of the of the twenty first century. I agree. All yeah. right, I love that. All right, we're on to our That's silver medals. Okay, silver medals. Now these are the ones that were. Maybe going to be number one, but just mm -hmm. didn't quite make the cut. Okay? Just didn't quite make it. So my silver medal goes to, you. you I think you're going to know it when I tell you exactly what the title is. Number 53, okay. Murder by Windshield. Oh. Do you remember this episode? Wasn't this the woman, wasn't this the nurse that killed the homeless man? And then she tried to kind of cover it up. Yes, exactly. Well, maybe yes. he was homeless. Maybe I'm misspeaking, um, but I, I believe he was, or he was I kind of like a. I believe so. Yes, I believe he okay. was actually. Now that you're saying that, but yes, and Shantae she tried Mallard. to cover it up. Great yep. episode. Great yep. worthy I, of that. That's great. I remember. I mean, I'll get to everything here. Let me give a little bit of a background for everybody, just so you know, because yeah. we want you to go listen to the episodes as well. So I'm not going to give you everything, but. Essentially, you know, she grew up in Texas, was very in, uh, involved in church and school. She later, uh, you know, enrolled in the nursing program, as Darren mentioned. Um, but she still kind of struggled financially. But on October 25th, 2001, after a night of partying, yep. she struck a man named Gregory Biggs with her car and drove home with him, lodged in her windshield and left him to die in her garage. And I, yeah, and, and she was in the medical profession. And she was so a she, nurse. In right. theory, she could have saved him. In theory. Exactly. And, you know, there the the whole thing about this was that she struck him and he was in the windshield and he was still alive, you know? And there was a debate, not necessarily a debate, but Darren and I talked extensively about, you know, could she have saved him? And what are the ethical the ethics around leaving him in a garage when you know that he's alive? And 
Anyway, months later, the police received a tip uh, leading to Shantae's arrest, and she admitted to the incident and the efforts to cover it up, including burning parts of her car's interior. Yeah. Um, wow. So essentially, during the trial, she expressed remorse, but the jury did find her guilty of murder and tampering with evidence. She was sentenced to 50 years uh, for murder and 10 years for tampering uh, served concurrently. And she'll be eligible for parole actually in 2028 after serving 25 years. Um, Gregory's son, this is another one of those cases that I like the way that it ended. Gregory's son actually forgave Shantae. I'm I'm hoping I'm saying her name correctly. While the prosecution emphasized the severity of her actions. So I just remember that the imagery and the, the craziness of somebody hitting somebody lodged in their vehicle for, for days uh, it's just it, I remember that really staying with me. Like, how but think could you about do the that shock. to somebody? But think yeah. about the shock. You know, people's yeah. reactions to things. It's like uh, I, I'm paralyzed by so much fear that I don't even know what the hell I'm going to do. You know, and you sort of convince yourself yeah, that maybe it'll that all go thing. away. Yeah, you know, yeah. and what a great episode, though. Totally worthy of it of a uh, silver. Yeah, thank you very much. So, silver medal to Murder by Windshield number fifty three. Interesting that we haven't had any overlap yet. Um, Not yet. Let's see how the the rest of this goes. Maybe on the gold. Uh, My silver. My silver episode goes to episode number one twenty seven. Left for dead. Uh, Oh, another left for dead type. This was released August sixth, two thousand twenty three, and this was. um, Once I tell you a little bit of the details of this, I'm sure it's going to. Bring back to you. This is about Lacey Ellen oh, Fletcher, yes. who was abused by her parents. She actually passed away at the age of 36. How I yes. am now, but she was um, autistic. She had she was a little bit special needs in that way. But her parents had sort of chained her, yeah. kept her on the couch that she fused yeah. with the couch. This was on like People magazine. This was kind of everywhere. Yeah. Uh, she 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 just she she died not too long ago. Um, but yeah. just severe neglect. Didn't eat anything. Um, and yeah, her body had fused with the couch, which just goes to show how lack of movement, even just like moving your leg for a second, yeah. um, wouldn't cause that. And it was just absolutely horrible. Probably one of the worst cases I think we've ever discussed only because the slow and painful t- just of your own kid, and, um, yeah, that's was really sad and really disturbing. And, um, each of her parents were actually sentenced recently yeah. in March the 20 years, um, in prison but um really sad which i think is an update because this episode when did this episode come out that was last year uh, sorry uh, august 6th yeah that's right so that's an update to that case that i doubt we got to yeah Um, or i know we didn't get to um yeah i remember the parents being you know that was another kind of debate because it was like the parents obviously left her there and like she just died on her own but was there like intent to kill her there maybe not but still very disturbing yeah, it says, you know, she'd been neglected by her parents after becoming becoming unable to leave her house due to a cognitive health decline. I'm yeah. sure because her parents kept her in there. But it was discovered that after this decline, Sheila and Clay, who were her parents, had left their daughter on their couch to suffer in her excrement and allow bugs mm. to eat at her body, failing to attempt to get her any medical mm. care whatsoever. Uh, and it obviously gained, gained significant media coverage for just being so horribly gruesome. Just, I mean, yeah, Googling Google imaging this is yeah. not something I recommend, yeah, but do also that. just yeah. pretty horrible. I mean, we covered this case a year ago, and it is certainly probably the one that sticks the most to me. I yeah, remember being I remember. so disturbed after yeah. talking to Nadine. So <laughs> I, if you are up for it, definitely give a re-listen or yeah. a first-time listen to episode number 127, Left for yeah. Dead. Yeah, we'll put a list of all of our uh, Olympic yeah. medalists and everything else in the show notes as well for you guys. That is a good one, Darren. I remember you being, I remember your facial reactions from those episodes, I think. It was horrible. Well. I mean, I can't, I don't yeah. even know what to say about it. Yeah, uh, it's, it's horrible. It's tough. All right, Darren, it is time. We are reaching the end of the medal ceremony. It is now time to give out the gold medals. I'm going to leave a little room here for our sound effects, I might add as well. Maybe, maybe I will. Maybe I won't. Oh, boom. My gold medal. Yeah is your bronze medal it was number 99 casey anthony where the truth lies i didn't react to it because you were doing such a great job and i thought i would just chime in with my own little moment here but i agree with every single thing you said i thought it was so interesting um to learn so much about her we had one overlap that's good yeah finally one right but um yeah i thought it was so interesting to learn so much about her the way that you said 
I thought it was very interesting too. I mean, other documentaries, Natalia Grace could have been on here as well. I think uh, there was, that was a lot of conversation. That was up there for that. me. That was up there for me. But this was another one of those ones where the true crime world really seemed to be talking, you know? Like, I felt like everybody I knew was like, did you watch the Casey Anthony documentary? Like, what are your thoughts? Do you think she's guilty? Um, so I thought it was a really kind of great. I remember us thinking, okay, let's, you know, we have our talking points. Like, let's see where this goes. And we ended up doing like, I want to say, I don't know how, how long is it? I'll look it up like 53 minutes or something insane. Yeah. Um, yeah. you know, and we debated some things about if she was truly aware of what happened. And I thought that, you know, painting her in a different light, which I found just very fascinating from a documentary standpoint, because, not every documentary can do that with such high profile cases. You know, it's not easy to sway the, what people's already preconceived notions are about somebody. So Absolutely. I loved it. Yeah. So that's my gold medal. Wow. Those are my medals, I, you guys. I really thought we were going to have the same gold because yeah. as I said, there's some reactions yeah. in my tops. So this was probably my favorite episode. We bring this up quite often. We have so many jokes about it. Episode 145, Love Has Won, The Cult oh, I was of Mother God. <clears throat> this was yeah. released on January 14th of this year, 2024. This was based on the Max documentary, uh, Love Has Won. I believe it was on Max. Yeah. Yeah, um, Max, in fact, yeah. let me just yeah, I believe yeah, it was. It. Okay, good. Uh, this is obviously about Amy Carlson. We make the joke that yeah. John is Mother God. This is Amy Carlson, and I am Father God. Uh, Your this dad is, is Grandfather God, yes. My dad is Grandfather God, of course. This is, it's funny because I sort of forgot about it, but on Wikipedia, just because I wanted to look up the cult. It's a cult documentary. Right. It was kind of insane just because it was actually a female cult leader. You know, ten, yeah. male cult leaders tend to for some reason, dispel all the men and then have to have sex with a 13 year old girl. It's like it's <sighs> part of the way that you are entered into heaven, apparently. Yeah. Not so much with Amy Carlson, who was really more of just about drinking colloidal silver and having a lot of drugs yeah. and LSD and cocaine and alcohol around. But Love Has Won, which was also known as the Galactic Federation of Light and 5D Full Disclosure. It was an American new religious movement, which was led by Amy Carlson, who passed away in 2021, as we know. Yeah. And, uh, if you haven't seen the doc, this is a great doc, and it opens with perhaps one of the most jarring scenes of a body I think oh I have ever God. seen. That's a good point. Now I'm Christmas rethinking lights, the list. Christmas yeah. lights take yeah. uh, take the case in it, but uh, Amy Carlson sort of referred to as Mother God, who described herself, among other things, as the creator of the universe. She kind of has these cute young cult members who create this YouTube channel and start selling merch and sort of live off them selling colloidal silver so much so that eventually Amy only really drinks colloidal silver, which by the way, you can buy. It is, it is sort of over the counter. You can buy it at Whole Foods. You're supposed to drink like a, like a, half a teaspoon and they were drinking jugs so much that you get like really silver blue. I couldn't yeah. even eat during this documentary. That's how crazy it was. But we still reference this sort of all we the time. That's a good uh, one. So this has to take gold, not only for its shock value, but just how much we reference it and yeah. how sort of odd it was. And 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 really the intellectual debate too about whether or not she sort of yeah. killed herself. Yeah. Um, whether these cult members are responsible for her to death. To some degree, right, right. Um, took aid in it, assisted suicide. Unclear if you even know that it's suicide. Because the money sort of, that was raised. The money that, that was stuff. raised, how she wanted to die. It's yeah. still going on. You know, yeah. these people still yeah. have a YouTube channel. So uh, <laughs> that is why episode number 145, Love Has Won, The Cult of Mother God, gets my gold. That's sure. the ultimate gold, I will say. I, I thought about that one. I had a little list of things and I was like, you know, we do reference it a lot. I think I should have put it in my top three, actually, now that I'm thinking of it. But I felt like if I did three reaction episodes, that's not really fair. Uh, well, it's tough because, uh, you know, yeah. b between having Casey Anthony and Love Has Won, I just thought, yeah. I thought, you know, anyone can sort of read cases. You want to hear people's opinions and them yeah. talking about things, which is what I think we kind of do best of just yeah. this, like, intellectual debate of maybe what's right, what's not, who's responsible, right. who's not responsible, how would you right. handle this situation are kind of our best moments. And yeah, so that's, that's a why good point. at least it had to take my top two slots. And by the way, Casey Anthony and uh, John Wayne Gacy were on Peacock. Did you happen to see the trailer for the new Scott Peterson documentary that's coming out on Peacock? I didn't, but I'm actually going to do that right watch now. because And I think we should react list. to that because we haven't done a reaction episode since I think Mother God the mother god list um, oh my god face to face yes that's yeah. what it's called face yeah. to face yeah i'm gonna it's watch coming it right out in now. august so maybe we'll get we can ask our friend amanda peacock if she'll send it to us so we can she do will. a reaction yeah, yeah. 
Yes, 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 well, yes. let us know what you guys think of our gold medal, gold, silver, and bronze Olympics. The the true crime Olympics have happened here on Shaken and Disturbed. Do you have a top five? Do you have a top three? Tell us what you guys would put, and we'll read it on next week's episode. Yes. You know, the Olympics will still be going on technically by the time I think the next episode comes out. Um, so message us on Facebook or on Instagram or in our uh on Patreon, of course. There are a million different ways to reach us and let us know who you think or what episodes you think yes. should get should get the medals yes exactly All let's right. end on a, a light note with some listener shout outs because of course we have to end like we do every week john yeah, wanted this to take is, the first one yeah this isn't gonna we're not changing everything on you guys so aaron who is a pledged best friend tier on patreon said quote loving the video episodes and we wanted to say thank you aaron and of course patreon members get early access to all of our episodes including smash the video ones the yeah so smash the button. subscribe button I'm if you're watching on them. youtube yes there you go yeah thank you aaron for that um our friend mitts also commented on last week's episode on patreon saying quote the story is terrifying i know people were desperate but <laughs> what the fuck yeah it is terrifying fair one. point yeah, yeah fair, fair point, point on that one. thank you mitts for that yeah, we love Mitz. And you guys can join Mitz and Aaron every week on Patreon, too. For as little as $5 a month, you can get all kinds of bonus content and episodes. You can get early access at a different tier. Um, you get the video episodes, like, several days early. We're doing all kinds of stuff over there on Patreon. Um, and, Darren, tell them about how they can get it even cheaper. Yeah, you can sign up annually and get it actually cheaper. Your contribution goes directly to the show and our small business here. So we just yeah. appreciate anything that you can give. And thank you so much in advance. John, you have a fun little update here. Yeah, a fun little update for um, our Patreons at the top, our Patreon members at the top tier that signed up for the 2023 gift, which was, of course, our true crime beanie babies. We're finally excited to mention that they are shipped. By the time you're listening to this, they are shipped. I have one right here in front They're of me, Darren. So cool. I don't know if you remember this little guy, Iggy the I Iguana. Do. Iggy. We should oh, also mention these I true love crime... the coming on that one. Isn't it great? We should yeah. mention these beanie babies came from Darren's personal collection. So they it's really a big are gift. a it's heartfelt a big... gift. Now, Darren, I want to also show for everybody the uh very cool special. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube or on, our on own, Patreon, our own tie tag, we have SD tie tie tags, if you will, with a yeah. true crime Beanie Baby star in it, and on the back is a little poem, a true crime poem, just for each Beanie so Baby. Cool. Yeah, it's really fun. Um, I can't wait for people to start posting about it because it's. So I know. Cool. I really can't wait for them to get it and like read their like, uh, you know, their poems and everything. So yeah. We hope you guys like them that signed up and uh, we're going to have a 2024 gift closer to the end of the year. We're actually going to do those on time, you know, this time. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. When you put me in charge of things, it's really just up in the air. About it's up to stuff. God. It's up to Mother God. <laughs> Mother what the hell God. happens? <laughs> That's right. So uh, thank you to the Patreon members. And guys, again, please sign up for Patreon if you can. It really does go directly to our show and keeps us going. So we really appreciate it. Darren, right. I'm losing my voice talking about all the amazing uh, medals and Beanie Babies. So I just wanted to let everybody know, make sure you take your vitamins. And definitely check your pits, especially if you're a penis. But a new addition from last week, don't eat a fucking package of weenies I forgot with, at that. least without cooking them first don't want them right out of the fucking package people that's insane yeah. you're and insane. specifically don't do that while you're performing surgery in a garage okay don't be yeah don't do that don't all do right that. all right we'll see you guys next time <laughs> your face bye okay bye